Welcome back to Yahoo Finance Live. The Batman still flying high following its domestic debut. This is even after AMC experimented with price hikes to see it. So did the experiment ultimately work? Let's bring in Yahoo Finance's Alexandra Canal, uh, who joins us now to discuss. And, and Alexandra, you know, I uh, am going to go see the Batman later on this afternoon. I did notice I paid almost 7 or $8 more for this movie than other comparable movies that were listed at the same time. Is that strategy working out for them? Yeah, that's the big question. This is an experiment and people want to know, did it work? And could we see more things in the future? Based on the experts I talked to and just the data I collected, the answer is a pretty confident yes. It's it's important to keep in mind that these price variations, it's not anything new per se. AMC has already been doing this overseas and competitors, Regal and Cinemark had actually already hiked prices for Spider-Man No Way Home in addition to the Batman for their respective opening weekends. They were just a lot more quiet about it than AMC. If you take a look at this chart from intelligence, you'll see the average price increases across those major chains. AMC charging about $1 more uh, than the average ticket price to see the Batman. Regal doing the same. So it's not a huge huge price increase, which I think is important to note since consumers were probably more ticked off that their popcorn and soda cost 30 bucks or that they can't fill their gas tank for under $60, $70. So I don't think an extra $1 increase is really going to break the bank for people that want to see these movies. And if you think about it, streaming services, they've consistently raised prices. We have Netflix experimenting with an extra fee if you share your password. And yet we still pretty much consistently see these consumers using those services. So that's another potential indication that people won't be too stressed about this if they continue to do this experiment moving forward. Yeah, I get, you know, if you want to offset that, I guess you can go and see a matinee screening instead. But I want to ask about um, how this impacts, because look, we already know about ticket price disparities. Anyone that's bought an IMAX ticket over a regular ticket or 3D, right? There's premium screens. Uh, there's uh, what, Dolby theaters. So how do they all kind of go into the fold here? Should we expect to see price increases in those experiences as well. For sure, and it's interesting to note too, because 22% of movie, movie goers opted to see the Batman in a premium format on over opening weekend. That's according to intelligence. And as you said, that's already a more expensive option. And pre-sales for those experiences were through the roof. In fact, IMAX sold out at 350 locations weeks prior to the Batman's debut. And that was even after AMC implemented these price hikes. So that tells us once again, that this wasn't a big concern for consumers. IMAX CEO Richard Gelfon also told me that this is a trend he sees sticking overall. He said, quote, while IMAX doesn't set ticket prices, the biggest change we've seen is that the studios are more open to exhibitors implementing price surging, and they have been in the past. Ultimately, it will be up to the consumer to accept or reject higher prices, but early indications are that they are willing to pay more to see the biggest must-see blockbusters on opening weekend. And I think that uh, point was proven just by looking at the massive domestic halls of both of these movies. We have the Batman with 128 million, the second best opening of the pandemic era, right behind Spider-Man No Way Home, which was set at a whopping 260 million. So I think all this proves that yes, at least for right now, this is an experiment that will be sticking. I think the question will be what kind of movies could we see these price increases for? Personally, I think it's going to be these superhero big action movies that have done consistently well throughout the course of the pandemic. Okay, and quickly, have you seen it yet? Yes, I have seen it. And it's interesting Ooh, because okay. when I went to see it on opening weekend, I had to go through several towns to even find a theater that could accommodate three people. It was crazy. So I think that just goes to show people are buying these tickets online, they're doing the pre-sales, and they wanted to see this movie in the theater. There's so many options right now to sit at home and entertain yourselves, but People really want that experience. And I think that's why we saw foot traffic surge at AMC locations, why these tickets sold out. So I thought it was really good, uh, but I don't know. I'm excited to hear your interpretation, Brian, when you see it later today. Okay, yeah. A after today, I'll have to follow. I did hear that it's dark. Well, not, not just in storyline, but Very dark. visually. It's literally dark as well. Uh, yeah, no, my name is Alexander yes. Canal. Thanks so much. Ooh, go ahead. What were you going to say? Oh, I was going to say, yeah, literally both dark visually and dark emotionally. So you, you've heard right. You've heard correctly. All right. Good to know. Yeah, finances, Alexandra Canal. Thanks so much for breaking all that down for us.
Well, we want to move on to another headline in the Hollywood space, Amazon making a deal fit for the movies. The e-commerce giant just closed its $8.5 billion buy of movie production studio MGM. It was cleared by an EU antitrust review, which found limited overlap between the online retailer and the studio. That green light would give the deal, uh, would bring MGM's expansive content library, including the James Bond franchise and Rocky movies, to Amazon's services.